Oh, the path system. You know, a lot of people rag on it, but I think it's actually a pretty good system if you learn to know it right. So welcome guys to another Planet Zoo video slash tutorial, I guess this is. It's more like a, I don't know, exploration video. My name is Leaf and thank you guys so much for joining me here once again today. Now, the path system often gets a lot of flack, you know? A lot of people don't like it. A lot of people don't like how hard it is to kind of manipulate. Even like when stuff happens like this, it doesn't really, it doesn't really quite hit the mark. But we're gonna see how we can best manipulate this and teach you guys how to utilize this system to the best of your abilities. And even I'm still learning too, so I know a lot of helpful tricks that I've learned from creators along the way, but there's still a lot to be discovered. And you know what? I might even make a mod soon enough that I will uh, uncheck these, so a lot of these will become redundant in the future. But you know, as for the time being, I haven't really found a way to crack that yet, so we're just going to continue on with what I have today. So, one of the first and foremost things are narrow paths and tiny paths. Paths under four meters, and these are some of the most necessary things for you to learn. Now, the fact that we can get to two meters with these, and we can only get to, you know, four meters with the other paths, it's kind of sad, you know? It doesn't really make sense, but you know what? There are some helpful tricks out here. I believe this was first shown off by Rudy. So if you guys aren't familiar with Rudy, number one, have you been living under a rock? He's like one of the biggest planet YouTubers out there. <laughs> and number two, definitely do go check out his channel because this is where I learned this helpful little trick and I believe you guys can benefit from it too. So go be, go show him some love, why not? <laughs> but anyways, so for narrow paths, you're gonna wanna select this just the bolsters or the booths, and then you just delete it. And then what you're gonna do, you're just gonna continue this path going through here, delete, and keep on repeating. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And soon enough, if you can select it right, oh my god, I'm losing it. You can just continue on. When I finally discovered this, it was like, how could I have been so stupid before? I'm not sure if you can make these like tight curves. Yeah, you totally can't, but I don't know. There's ways to manipulate it. I think this is going to be really helpful for like stuff down the line. Like if you're doing, I don't know, if you're doing small little nature trails, it'll definitely help you out in that regards. But no, you can do like crazy stuff like that. And that's like number one. So that's like small narrow paths. And so another thing that is often a point of contention is going to be large plazas. And you know, if you're just doing this and you're going through the going through the motions and trying to make like one big circle path, it's not gonna work out. I mean you can hide it, of course, with like, I don't know, let's see, elevated planter. Yeah, this is a really good blueprint, by the way. <laughs> you can hide it and you can make it look like, oh yeah, that's just conveniently placed in there. But no, like, there's some ways that you can manipulate it. For instance, if you place one of these bad boys down and you just start doing a big grid. So let's just say I want to do kind of like a, um, like a bean shaped, bean shaped, yeah, bean shaped, uh, plaza. You can get like the initial shape going on at first. And then what you're going to do, you're going to line this up right in the corner and you're going to click and then delete and then it gives you a nice smooth transition. And so basically you want to manipulate the grid as much as possible, and then you're just going to want to... Well, that's another one of the problems of the paths, I guess. Uh, it doesn't really do me too much justice in this video, but you know. As long as you shrink it down to only affect like the pieces in question, it will work. So for in this case, you can kind of see how that only affected the ones that were in blue. So if you do it over here, you see how it goes all the way out to there. If you do that and delete it, it'll go all the way back there. So that's a good indicator of like where the stuff is going to go. But yeah, now you can have like larger plazas. You can start to like put down your benches and stuff. I'm, I'm becoming a really big fan of this one actually. So we could just, you know, manipulate that, turn that all white. 
and then you can just dress it up to your heart's content, you know? And that's like one of the best ways I've discovered to make like large plazas. And another thing that I've discovered is abandoning the textures. Now this is courtesy of, I believe it was Remnant or Jash. I know they use it all the time in their, um, in Twin Palms, just because these like, these fences on the elevated paths are so useful. So what do you get when you have like the most useful fence over here? Oh my god, that's so good too. Oh my god, why am I just discovering these? But yeah, what do you get when you have like some of the most useful fences and you know, you're not a big fan of the texture? Well, what you do, you just cover it up, you know? So we're just going to go into like one of my favorites. Um, plaster wall panel. And we're going to drop that right down there. So we're going to sink that in just so so one of the best indicators are these curbs. So as long as you get it right below there, it looks like its own path. And so this is also a great way to kind of like incorporate your own designs as well. Personally, I'm a huge fan of, you know, using nice mute colors for pathing and stuff like that. So you can just continue it on all the way through here. And now you get like one of these nice, very, it's very real, I would describe it. It's very zoo themed. And then you can just kind of sync that to avoid the Z fighting. And there you go. So that's another way to get like custom paths, especially with manipulating the um, fences as well. Because I know a lot of the elevated fences, like, you know, they have such really good ones. <laughs> um, what else am I thinking of? So, yeah, just continue on with, like, utilizing the curbs and stuff like that. Just, like, my favorite thing to do is placing and deleting. And you can see me do that all throughout here. It just smooths out the path to be, like, I don't know, a lot better to work with. And it's just really amazing in that regard. And I don't know. The best thing about these two is that it's quicker to go back and redo them. But one of the things that I've also discovered from Remnant is abandoning the idea of paths altogether. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but here's something that I learned from his little Suyana build just not too long ago. And I'm, I'm actually in the map right now. <laughs> Um, I'm building in Suyana for Estan right now, and it's just like, I keep on coming back to these because it's such a good idea. But yeah, just when paths have good textures, you just don't want to use it for that. You can use it for like a multitude of different purposes, you know? So if we go to our faux rock friends, and if we start to incorporate these a little bit more, I just use... I just love using these because they're such like, I don't know, they're versatile, they're good for like large areas and stuff. We can start to essentially take advantage of these textures and we can actually just hide the rest of it because I did a little bit too much. And unfortunately you can't put water on here because these would be perfect for fountains, but still the point still stands where like you know, this is still going to be really helpful in the long run. And these are just good ways to decorate those little dead zones of your zoos. And I don't know, you can just decorate it like a nice little rock garden. You can put down a rock here and there. I don't know, what else can we throw in here to make it look pretty? Let's get like statue. We can turn that off. And I don't know, we can throw like a little iguana statue. This is one of my biggest problems with these reward statues they always default to go so much further down than they actually are but hey whatever and yeah you can sink these in here can make it look pretty let's just pretend we're making like a reptile house and yeah look at this go <laughs> like it's so cool how much versatility you guys can have with this and no, no, let's make it even prettier. You know, why not? This can be a full on decoration video. So let's get some like tropical foliage. We can sneak one right here. I bet like these are perfect for little 
uh, gravel piles like this. Let's get some desert. We can get some like succulents in here as well. But yeah, guys, I really do hope this helped you guys like, you know, just become a lot more acclimated with the pass system. And like, certainly, as I said before, even I'm still learning, so it still takes a little bit of getting used to. Don't think that you're gonna get it on like the first shot, even though if you do, that's amazing and I'm extremely jealous of you. But still, my point still stands. Just have fun with it and, you know, get weird with it. Get experimental with it because in the long run, you know, you're just building the best damn zoo you can build. And I feel like this is one of the best ways to achieve that. So yeah, guys, my name is Leaf. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Uh, if you are interested in more like, you know, tutorial content, if you think this one was good, I, I don't even know. I don't even know if it's good or not. But um, if you guys really did enjoy it, please let me know. I'm more than happy to make some more in the future. This was like, it's really, it's a, it's a fun new niche to get into, you know? And I really do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like, be sure to drop a comment. Let me know like, what one you're most excited to use in the future maybe even consider subscribing if you can because that would be extremely awesome it'd help me out and yeah i'm pretty much done for shilling thank you guys so much and i hope you guys have the most wonderful day take care and have a wonderful great one bye